welcome to the Brazilian Grand Prix, uh, round 21 of the new season here in STB, uh, season 17. Uh, you join us here at the Autodomo uh, José Carlos Pache, um in Brazil for the penultimate round of the season. I'm joined by Big Steve here uh, this evening. Um, and yeah, Big Steve, how are you feeling ahead of uh, Brazil? It's great, to be, it's great to be back. Um, Aldi, I'm very much looking forward to Brazil. It's one of the best tracks on the calendar, in my, my opinion. Um, I, I just love the layout. I think it promotes plenty of good racing, um, plenty of long straights into, into turn one and turn four. That's where the main two DRS points, that'll be the main points of interest for the race as well, is the technical sector, um, sector two. So I don't really expect too much to be there, but if you can get a good run off the final corner, we can definitely see some overtaking into turn one and into turn four through the two DRS zones. Um, also looking at Brazil, it does have a very rich history here. And um, we'll have got a fair few Brazilians on the grid, so this will be their, their home race very late on in the season. So hopefully we'll be seeing a couple of the, the home favourites trying to stand out for the rest of the crowd. Um, and the other variable that I feel like we should really keep our eyes peeled on is the weather um, because I feel like Brazil um, anything can really happen, it can rain at a, a moment's notice so I think drivers will need to be best prepared for the the, the versatility of the conditions uh, Yeah, uh, We've got a few news drivers this evening uh, Venom uh, at the moment, Dan's back uh, we've got NRT Zyklon uh, Placky, MS Placky is back with us this evening. Uh, and we've got FDRA there, so a few new drivers with us. Um, and as you said, um, we've got, I believe, four Brazilians Brazilian on the grid. Uh, Bruno Bill. Uh, Kevin. Uh, sorry, <laughs> Janino. Uh, and BC on the grid, so they should be hoping for a good result in their home race. Um, cast our minds back to the Mexico week, so what did you make of um, the Mexican Grand Prix last week? Um, I really did enjoy it. Um, I feel like, um, we remember um, Bruno Will really was they having the best qualifying session and he ended up qualifying like 16, 17, so he had to step for the back of the grid. Um, but um, in his mind, the damage was the, there was the damage done really because he had already sealed the championship. And um, for what I remember, I think it was a safety car at the most appropriate time for him and his strategy for him to just cut through the field at the end. And he took his he overtook his teammate on the final lap. Um, everybody was pretty was pretty defenseless on their harder tyres. So Bruno Ball was able just to kind of cut his way through the field and up to the front um, so he'll definitely be looking the strongest no doubt in my mind because this is his home circuit so he'll definitely be looking to improve and put on a demonstration for us but at the same time considering the form that he's in it is really quite hard to overlook him in terms of getting pole position and depending where he qualifies the race win as well Uh, yes, um, Omar Venom has got P1, 106.9 and 106, followed by Ham Jam, P2, followed by Jam Pam, followed by uh, two of the new drivers in uh, Cyclone and Burst. That's a good shot for them. Matthew has P1, 106.7, so he's already put the time on board there. Uh, he's um, looking to show himself to be uh, a contender for next season, he's definitely got pace. And we're going to see what he can do um, up there. Definitely, I feel like this will be the the kind of period in the season where, like, as we were kind of saying last week, I think, like, the championships are pretty much signed, sealed and delivered at this point, so this will probably be uh, the time where the league will try and organise uh, some late uh, races in the season to get some Division 2 drivers in, to get some new drivers in for the other leagues to come in and familiarise ourselves with the STB dynamics and 
um, the racecraft that you'll experience here. Um, so I think Brazil and Abu Dhabi will be perfect stomping grounds for that. Um, so very much looking, to, looking forward to seeing what the new drivers can deliver here in Brazil this weekend. Um, so there's not been any changes to the um, classification here. Mecca's currently P8 at the moment, P9 7.2. Uh, Kevin P9 is not going to get after the fact he's home racing and trying next to awesome to have a bag. Uh, well, he's done a lap, so we'll have a look at him. Uh, Definitely, he's got Seatsy in front, and Seatsy will be milling away that he is on a lap, and he'll do his best to go the way which he duly obliges there. Through sector two, you want to be really patient with your throttle input all through this sector because it has plenty of off camber, and then plenty of dips and troughs with the with the actual landscape of the circuit. So you want to maybe not take as much of the Astro stuff on the outside of uh, turn twelve there, but. Bruno Will seems that's the most appropriate way to go then it's just flat out all the way up keep the car to the left very up close and personal with the pit lane wall here at 1 minute 6.2 put some half a second faster already and we're just over 6 minutes into the session um, so Bruno Will once again really kind of rubber stamping his authority really early on in the session half a second quicker than anybody else Murphy, we are 1 minute 6.7, sees him up in P2, so an AMS Dan, so we've got three new entries up at the top, it was OM of Venom leading in the early stages, but he's in P4, hand jump P5, so got six drivers in the 1 minute 60s already, which um, I definitely will believe that that will just be... Like everybody will be at least at a 1 minute 6 and you might maybe even look at a 1 minute 5 um, for a, a pole position time here but I don't know really too much about track evolution here track evolution will always improve the track conditions so uh, it's either Bruno will peak really early or he is on course for a 1 minute 5 which would be an absolutely ridiculous time to be setting here yeah, uh, Dan Ham's uh, two tackles off in the first sector, so we'll see what he can do. Venom's up in MP, uh, down in P8. Uh, NPR Victor's in P7, he's back after a few races as well, so that's to say. He's in P7, that's a good effort from him. I'm, I'm just on board with, with Jam Ham and it's looked relatively clean so far. He is coming through the sector to split the new just to see where he is. He is up by four tenths of a second, and that should put him in to the at least the one minute uh, six point five. So he should be looking at at least P two here. It is just uh, he's taking a slightly wider line on the way up. But I don't think it will do too much damage to his time. It does a one minute six, and it does put him in P three, just one thousandth of a second faster than Venom. So. Um, and that's one thing I feel like we'll really notice here as well is the fact that there is like it's such a short track it's only like 2.8 mile so we are definitely going to be seeing very condensed times like this uh, on the leaderboards here that you can see where it is 1.4 split in the full field but looking at um, P2 to P11 is 3 tenths of a second so it really is going to be a matter of just how much you can squeeze out of your car through certain turns and the general level of performance that you can deliver uh, when you're flying lap. Um, and it's really going to determine whether you sit on the front row with the looks at and whether you sit at the, the back end of the midfield. So it really is all to play for in the midfield, really. Um, so I feel like there is an emphasised importance um, and getting a good qualifying lap and purely because the qualifying pace is so it's is so symmetric. Bot Con, P fourteen at the moment. Uh, he's uh, on a lap, so we'll have a look at him. He's on a decent one, but he's not really, you know he's three tanks for Patrick, so that's a lot. He's gone for a one and six here. 
it looks relatively quick. He's, you've got some drivers keeping the car really close to the left hand side on the way up the hill and the the further left you keep the car like you are shaving off fractions of a second um, a millisecond off your time so you want to kind of keep the cars close to the wall as you can on the inside we've seen that with Bruno Will we've seen Jamham kind of deviating a wee bit but no too far so he kind of kept it very much to the left but he was the basically like T uh, kissing the wall all the way along and then we had Zyklon who just took the standard racing line so we're seeing very different approaches up the hill to the to the to the, to the, to the start finish straight um, and I think that might be a matter of mm, that could be a matter of fractions a second mildly because I've seen Zyklon he's got a 1 minute 6.603 6 and he has 3 thousand a second shy. I feel like if he was maybe at least central on the way up the hill, he could have been in a 1 minute 6.5, so he really could have been on the front row currently if he shaved those few thousands of a second off, but um, I definitely feel like he'll be, he'll definitely have time in the bag really, because his lap from what we saw did look very consistent and relatively clean, um, so he could probably be wanting to watch out for in the race as well, maybe even regardless of where he starts, um, to be fair, because he has looked relatively um, speedy so far. Who is that, sorry? That's Zyklon. Okay. Uh, sits here in P15 at the moment, uh, in his Renault, uh, currently on a 106.9. So it's not really a lap time that we'd be uh, expecting from uh, the team. Let's just see what he's going to do here, attempt for up in the second sector. And we'll jump on board the, the new. Oh. 6.7 P12 for the Renault. So that's not really a strong. It's strong, but it's not where it should really uh, be. Omar Benham, their new driver on the lap. Let's have a look. And he's Williams. It looks to be. Invalidated for what I can see, he is planted between the two Mercedes on track, so um, looking looking at the leaderboards already, Maldi, we're looking to see, like, we've got, it is fairly mixed, mainly because we have got Plaky and Zyklon and Venom all in the top five, and I feel like drivers like Ham Jam and Mercury will probably be looking, and DJ Danny as well, be looking to put themselves Oh, Beast is crashed, sorry, Beast is off the circuit. Beast is off the circuit, but it was on 106.1, but Beast is off the circuit. And that's coming up, up the hill, up Jun Shao. So I don't know if he's maybe just kind of got a bit too keen on the, on the throttle on the exit. And he's just let the car basically, like the, the front of the back of the car beats the front of the car and Rooney goes, but... I caught the tail end it, so I don't exactly know he, uh, hit the what curb. led to that. Yes, at the point, hit the curb. Uh, the the curbs are quite uh, the curbs are quite brutal. Um, so you cannot like I feel like Brazil. It looks so simple in in terms of general layout and um, and the general uh, stylings of the circuit. But you really want to be patient with the throttle input mainly because. The second sector is through a slow speed corners and it's so easy just to put the throttle down that extra like that extra wee bit and it completely unsettles the car. It makes the car very unhappy through um these inclines and declines, so you really want to be patient on the throttle. Sorry, I was just saying Same with it. No, oh, no, that's fine. Same with the the curbs as well, like see I'm on board with TCC McFly, like that outside curb on the exit of Jun Shaw, which is turn twelve. You, you, if you're going to ride that curb, you, you, you try and avoid it. But when you're on that curb, like you're going to have to be very delicate with your throttle because yeah. that curb is quite unforgiving to um, the more aggressive drivers on the grid. So yeah. it'll definitely um, be. Sorry. No, I'd just say I'll definitely be one to watch it from the race. We see Janino retire. 
in the pit lane, um, so he does think of the NNA belt on the PA. I was just going to say, uh, Rizzi, I'll be going through the corner names um, in the on the formation lap, so, that, so everyone knows the corners we're dealing with, because Brazil is a very large uh, track for names. Uh, Placky then, P2, on the center CB, he's having a good start to uh, Virginia Grand Prix, but he is a very long way off winner of Winnable. He's dominating in proceedings here in Brazil. Um, as per usual, what do you expect him to do? It's a Brazilian Grand Prix. So, no surprises there. Uh, let's have a look at Plaki then. Uh, Bruno World's closest um, challenge opposition. Just jumping on board on the new as he has about his start, his final flying lap of the session. Still got just under two minutes remaining, um, and everybody's jumped onto the soft tyres, doing any second gear for turn one, and then up to fifth through turn two. That will help with the traction, keep it very close to the kerb on the inside for turn three, minimise your run through the long sweep and left onto the second DRS straight. You want to break just on the 50. And I think he does get a bit of a slide on, does carry that wee bit too much speed into the corner. And that's why you've seen him drift out wide. Turn 6 is an uphill right-hander, relatively easy, but he's going to run into traffic a fairly well and truly get any cell out the way there. And I think Placky has kind of been a bit unsettled by that because he's missed the apex for turn 7. And then again for turn 8. Turn 9 looks relatively calm. Touching the cover on the outside, you don't want to really get too greedy with that. It does really help through turn 10 up to downhill left. And I don't know why everybody's taking that AstroTurf um, on the right hand side. As you can see, it does bump, um, it does completely like destabilise the front um, stability on the right hand side. And I feel like that might be something to cater for in the race. But Placky does not really opt for the, 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 the shortest run to the line. And that's P3. He is three tenths of a second shy. Sorry, he's straight. He's home right. It's a Brazilian front row at the moment. And VZ definitely showing up now in his home race. And I feel like, I feel like, honestly, like regardless of whether it's just a game or in real life, I feel like the fact that you know that you're racing at your home circuit definitely does help you find a couple of tends to a second or does help you find some kind of form and uh, sense of self so very much looking massive forward to seeing crash, what he can do. Massive crash! Massive crash! Damn man crashed out of the foot of the fact they caught Jimmy's Grand Prix then out of the Brazilian Grand Prix qualifying. He's binned it in the middle of the track with yellow flags in the second sector. He's binned it. It's um, I believe the corner was on the exit. Um, it, uh, the see the logo there, so uh, get the corner names up. So, um, yeah, just point in there for Hamjam. Oh, okay, 13th. That, that purely to. Getting that, confused. That purely to me, Maldi, just looks to be Jamham carrying too much speed into four. We saw it with Plucky on his flying lap. Um, but he was able to kind of keep it on on the track. I don't know if Jam has just got a bit too carrying a bit too much speed into four, and he's allowed the car to go over the curb on the outside. And once you get over the curb, it's go. The, it, it's not quite a sausage curb, but it does raise, it elevates quite a bit. So when you're going through turn four with speed, and if you're just going to be a bit aggressive on the entry a four and on the exit a four then you're going to get a complete snappy oversteer he's probably heard that and it's through the current of the wall on the left hand side and that's why we've seen such a big incident it wasn't quite on the racing line but drivers will have been a bit more circumspect and getting through there with yellow flags because you don't really care where his car was until you were on the exit a four and when you're on the exit a four turn five is quick it's like a, it's a, it's like it's, it's right there. Like as soon as you day turn four, you're basically setting yourself up for turn five. So you've got little time to think, and then you've got little time to consider where Jamham's car is after his incident. So drivers that were actually on the final lap, they have done really well to uh, to actually avoid the stricken Haas. Um, but that does put them in P6. Though no many drivers really improved on that at the end. Bruno will 
41, no, sorry, 61,000 to a second shy. Yeah, one minute five, so Bruno will really, like, bring in some next level stuff here to Brazil. Yeah, and definitely. It's, and it's four tenths of a second quicker than ABR Murphy, who he will be sharing the front row way, so it's Mac it's Mercedes McLaren Haas McLaren, so very much looking forward to seeing how this will go. McLaren really in a strong position, especially with Ham Jam done in 14th now, so um, him and Mercury really out of sync here in Brazil, so they'll probably be looking most likely to go for the alternate strat now, knowing that they're qualifying at the back end of the field. Yes, um, as I said previously, uh, I'm going to be taking um, us and the viewers through the corner names because I've been doing a good bit of research this week about the corners around this auto, uh, the auto, auto do, do, uh, do Jose Carlos Pache, and I'm a little bit confused. Why aren't we continuing? I'm, I'm a bit confused. What's going on? But why aren't we start? Uh, what, what, what we starting? Hmm. Honestly, I don't, I don't actually know. Like, we've had this incident um, a few times in the season, but I can't mind the last time that we did. Um, and I think Kevin I think, needs to start down. Uh, I think we're just waiting on Kevin. Oh, here we go. He's left, He's the, left session. the session. Oh, I'm but uh, that's really it. It was just waiting on Kevin. But it is Bruno Will that takes the best seat on the grid yeah. in pole position. Second. And it's a 1 minute 6. 1 minute oh, sorry, 6 you go. at point zero six one. Great lap there from Bruno Will. Second is ABR Murphy. Is that Kevin Lynch Jones? Um, Lynn News. Oh no. Um, that means the lobby's going to be full. Okay. Second is Murphy. Third is. Is he left? Oh, that guy's left. Eh? Okay, that's good. Uh, VC is third, and I'll continue the grid in a minute. Let me just get um, Kevin into the lobby. That's the most important thing. Fourth is Placky. Fifth is Zycon. Sixth, Jamham. Seventh, Venom. Eighth, Jaw. Ninth is a new driver bird. And tenth is Ali Italia. That concludes your uh, top ten for the Brazilian Grand Prix, the penultimate round of the season. Um... And, yeah, I mean, this is going to be a great race. I think Brazil always Ooh. offers um, great, great racing. And it is raining for the Brazilian Grand Prix. Aqui no Interlagos. Here in Interlagos for the Interla Interlagos Grand Prix. But I, don't, I don't like to call it the Brazilian Grand Prix. I like to call it the Interlagos Grand Prix. Uh, but, um, yes, rig seat. But it's the right thing to do now, because that's going to really spice things up. It it still looks to me that I think drivers have really kind of obviously set the car up for um, for dry conditions, so I do feel that the, the, the track might dry out. We don't have any information about the weather on hand, so we are kind of really just kind of like in the same position as as the viewers in terms of the weather, we don't actually know what's going to happen. Um, so we are pretty much left in the dark in terms of how we see the race unfold in terms of weather. But what the weather's really going to do is, is it really is going to bring a whole level, a whole new level of caution onto the first couple of laps because. Um, I don't know how much practice the drivers have had with the intermediate conditions, um, whether they've done it on practice sessions or time trial or in other leagues or whatever, um, but setting your car up for intermediate conditions um, when you've done no practice of the sort can really be a completely challenging shift in um, in terms of like dealing with the 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 situation but um it looks to me that it is inters so the track is wet enough for that so um, we're today i'm going to take the the uh, viewers with the coordinates so here we've got the iconic senna s senna senna s's um and then turn three here we is club of the soul a very a very important corner so the drivers need to get good exit out there down the straight red to a push that there we go to the Cidad Bolado. 
uh, which actually in Portuguese means lake, lake's descent. That's what it translates to. Uh, then it's Fira Dora, turn six and seven, uh, we'll see, which I believe is six, seven. Then we've got Laran Gina, uh, which means little orange, very good. Then uh, we've got Ina Gino uh, um, here, uh, uh, Bico do Gipato, Bico Gipato, that's her name. Uh, then it's um, Magulo, Magulo, like this corner that um, Benjamin's coming around now, that is Magulo. Uh, which translates to uh, dive, and then this one corner we say Jung Sao, or one of the other corners Jung Sao. Uh, then it's Cafe, I don't even know these corners, we'll see. Very interesting, Cafe. Uh, to be that goes box, that's the run down to here. Then the little kink that we've got Palaki coming through is called Aki Van Kadas. Those are the corner there. Very interesting. We see you got a little bit of Portuguese on the stream. Who's going to win the Brazilian Grand Prix, Sam? It's really hard to overlook Bruno Will, especially with his quality pace and being in pole position. If he can keep it in a, if he can keep the lead in a turn one through to three, then I think he'll be um, on his way to a victory. Yes, I think Bruno Will's definitely got the victory. He's going to, he's going to close out. Uh, for not around the season, he's going to have a great race. It's going to be the reflection of how this season's gone from the world champion then on pole position at his home race. BC, watch out for him. He's in he fought his home race. Uh, watch out for him. He could, he could well be a pony. Looks like um, the strategy looks like uh, it is going to be intermediates for the whole race. It's three lights, we see. It's four lights. It's five lights for the Brazilian. The match from Milton for Brazil. It's been a jump start for Hamstrom. He's already got a jump start. Bruno will lead the driver down into turn number one now. And uh, it's all kicking off with the, with the lag. But down into turn one, we see. I don't know where Bruno will is. Let's keep an eye on him. Bruno will leaves. Followed by BC, I believe that is. BC takes second place there, we see. Down into uh, the first corner of Murphy, heat three, four. He's slightly hard. We're going to have to wait for the glitch to end. And, um, then we've got uh, Blackie followed in. There's been any collision. Looks like, look like it's been a clean start, we'd say. Definitely. There is a Red Bull right at the back of the field. Uh, I think that might be a Fally already. Nine seconds um, behind. Yellow flag for Italia. Um, Italia looks like he's lagging a bit. He's crashed. He's crashed. Right, yeah. Italia's that uh, crashed. The glitching is so mad here. I don't know what's going on. Um, but Bruno will leave followed by B6 and Brazilian wants him. Definitely. Start looked relatively clean. Um, there was maybe like a wee bit of wheel banging right at the back of the field going through turn two. It's a really um, quick right after the, the first cut, uh, the first turn, so um, drivers will probably have been a bit like kind of lacking the spatial awareness, especially with the, the conditions being as adverse as they are because intermediates like it is harder to see like that's why you see the the flashing red light on me consistently on the back of the cars Murphy, sorry Murphy, uh, battling yeah. the back of the grid with OML Venom here that comes down into the Estos Senna down into the first and second corners Murphy takes uh, 14th place there off the Williams that's a good start for him he's up in a he's up two places from when we started uh, but Murphy and uh, oh, it's definitely Murphy and are battling but I'm so confused. This love oh, is and quite we'll get, And we've got AMS Dan up the inside of um, TCC McFly, and they're still going side by side through turn five. And the Alpha Tauri just keeps the place. AMS Dan taps him, and that's going to allow Mercury and Venom through. And Dan was looking a bit ambitious on the brakes into four. Um, and Mercury's well, getting pushed out of the grass. Venom there. He did a good little dive bomb there, but did push Mercury off the circuit. That's a bit better. Mercury getting a Mercury getting a wee bit of a squeeze there for the Williams. So I think once is a mistake, seconds a choice. That's what they say. Um, and Mercury looked to get the move done. No, sorry, Dan looked to get the move done and he turned uh, four on the Alpha Tauri and then McFly held it really well on the exit of five 
and Dan just completely lost any real sense of awareness and he just tapped the vacuum. Like, I don't really know how else they put it. I think that is that pretty much sums it up. But um, VZ, after such a strong start off the off his grid slot um, and up into P2 for P3 on the grid, and he's already 2.6 seconds behind. So um, a wee train starting to form between himself, Murphy, Zyklon, and uh, Jamham. And I think that's Placky just joining the back and then with Jill this and DJ Danny. So I've got everybody um, kind of starting to queue up for P2 at this point. Um, but Murphy looks like he's right on the back. Danny's of him. looking pretty and good, sorry. Danny's looking quite strong in these conditions. He did say he did want the rain in Brazil. He did, he did want it. Definitely. DJ Danny already up three places for his, uh, for his grid slot as well. Um, and I'm on board with Murphy, who is in the slipstream of VZ. The slipstream will only be as effective in the intermediate conditions, um, but it does just kind of allow the McLaren to tuck itself underneath the rear wing. VZ getting a bit of oversteer on the exit of one, which completely um, hinders his run through two and three, but Murphy hummed a bit aware of what was going to happen with the Haas and the car's behaviour. He has to back out and... Um, has to settle for losing everything that he gained through the, the final sector so Murphy might just maybe be playing a game of patience here and kind of waiting for the right opportunity to open up but it will need to be soon if he's wanting to try and catch Bruno Will in front who is looking to lap, who is lapping Maldi at least a second a lap um, quicker. Yeah the gap's need four seconds. Easy. That's pretty, it's pretty crazy though. But it did be, he has burnt a lot of his ERS already, but I mean, in the intermediate conditions, in the wet weather, like, you can you can save it more because you're more reliant on your brake pedal, like, because your braking distances increase, um, your effectiveness increases, like, your reliance increases on the brakes, and that's allowing the car to recharge the battery, recharge through the distribution of the kinetic energy. Um, within the car, so as soon as you're going to step rapidly putting your foot on the brake and like the aggression you put in behind your left foot, then the the mere battery, the mere energy you're going to you know, charge your battery up with. So I don't think ERS management will be too much of an issue, at least in this stage. But if it is going to dry up, that's when we'll see it becoming very a prominent issue. Yeah, Danny then is catching onto the back of Joel, so he's got some very good pacing conditions at the moment here in Brazil. Obviously, he did want a uh, wet men map. So, um, I think he's very happy there. The gap, uh, Rick Steve, wouldn't have looked at VT 4.3 seconds now. He's flying along. Definitely, Bruno Will's already nearly, nearly out of sight um, at the front. Um, but as you were saying, DJ Danny is one of the biggest, the, the, one of the biggest gainers off the start, and I think he might be looking at Joe in the next couple of laps. Joe can just run in his own race, and DJ Danny's already deploying some battery, and he might maybe go for a late move if he gets close enough. Joe is a bit aware. Hey, DJ Danny on his way in. Is he going to late on the brakes? He thinks against it, but. Danny might set his cell up for the next lap. Going on. Saying he is. Ferrari versus Red Bull. It's it's one of the biggest battles of the modern era in Formula One. Uh, it's one it's one of the biggest battles on track here in STB in Brazil. Kevin keeping the final points paying position to his cell there but Janino will be wanting to take it off him and work his way up through the field um, looking at the position changes really we're not really going to properly reflect on that just yet but um, DJ Danny big starter there after stepping P11 on the grid already up into 8th and he is keeping um, and that would have been 18th so basically back of the grid and he's 
Carroll and he's in race Has at Mercury P12. got 12. Um, let me just check. No, that I can see now. But looks like he's got a broken front I don't, wing. He might, if he's got any kind of damage, like we'll see what he's and but we'll see what he's stealing inputs like through turns one through three. It, it been, looks. It, I don't know if the car's just set up to look a bit oversteery, but I could kind of get what you mean. Like I think it, it might maybe like just he, be the no, map. It does look like he has got damage on the right hand side. I'll need to get a much closer look than what these cameras are off him. But oh, and he's sliding. Oh, big, big twitch. Oh, is it just Ooh, traction? I don't six. know. He's really struggling right now. Has he got damage? Yeah, broken M plate. He's got a broken M plate. I'll need to. Maybe, get oh, maybe he's had a collision. I don't know. But he's really struggling now, really badly. It might be that um, when you're when you're actually driving the car, and um, when you get the telemetry on your on your dash, um, you'll get the the outline of the car, and then you get the tire wear, the tire temperatures, brake temperatures, wing, uh, what fitness. What is that? I think you might. I think you might just have the 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 actually the see the damage indicator for the wing. It might have the lime green, which is like barely noticeable but it's enough to oh, oh he's, on, he's, the he's, the on, the he's on the curb he's on the curb yeah he's having an absolute shocker with dan's off the circuit now mercury is having a shock out of a race here in brazil and it stopped raining it stopped raining so the rain spell wasn't he wasn't his um Lengthways before it was really going to be the rain stopped actually quite early, Mal. Yeah, I mean, the, we had absolutely um, no idea. The pit, the pit strategy said that it was going to rain for the whole race. It was saying it's going to for the whole race. So it's definitely no looking to be the case unless it is going to come back. So what's Danny going to do then? Because Danny needs to try and get as fast as quickly possible because because he's he's saying he's uh, affected in wet conditions and he's in the dry. So. See, the the wet weather really kind of does elevate the skill levels a wee bit. As they just rely on this the the setup, you can have to rely on the the driver quality as well. And I feel like the wet can differentiate between the good and the great. Uh, sorry, um, sorry, Murphy. Murphy. He's got the team on BC. He's now within a tenth. He's getting close now. Here we go. This could probably be overtaking it. In a few laps, man, you have to take down the straight. But VZ, I mean, I mean and and VZ's and VZ's defence, he has done really well to hold his ground here. But at the same time, um, we don't really know how quick Murphy or Zyklon or Jamham are really going to be because they kind of get oh, by VZ. Mer sorry, sorry, but Murphy had another slide. Mercury's had another slide that was out of um, uh, Pinaluna. Um and yeah, he's really struggling right now. I'm trying to see if he's actually got damage. I, I, I can't see. He must have some kind of um, like damage two yellow somewhere. Flag. It's off the circuit. He's had a, ho he's had a horrid afternoon. Horrid race. But BC now and Murphy are now battling for uh, race. This is now the, this is the battle now. The fly is going to pit there. He's trying to get out on the first set of those um, tops. We don't know. Tops, mediums, maybe even hard oh, to get to the end. Hard. I, I don't know, Maldi. I'm really a bit unsure about the McLaren's sensor uh, strategy direction here. Same with Mercury. I don't think. Hards is really the way to go. The hard tyre is the really the the optimal tyre in terms of dry strategy here. It is the soft to mediums here in Brazil on a on a dry day, but um in but terms it is that pen, of, But maybe yeah, yeah. I was thinking I won't be able to go that I won't be able to go this far I'll go safety car but maybe you know it's like 10, 26 laps to go, the medium won't go that far. Because you'd expect to be pitting around 14, 15 on softs to go on mediums. 
Um, but now they're on like it, 10. So. Well, the, 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 the variable that we need to kind of consider as well, Maldi, is the fact that it was just raining there. Like, it is very bleak. It's a, it's a grey, cloudy, overcast day. Murphy has to go again. So, he doesn't really think it's quite that point yet. Um, but, I don't think hard tyres... We know where it was on the hard. I don't think hards is your way to go, but it seems to be the tire of choice for just about everybody that I'm seeing so far. But I'm only I'm only expressing concerns about hards when you're when you're driving in the intermediates like this, when you're driving with in the rain and you're going for wet tires to dry, the the tire temperatures and the track temperatures are significantly lower in the wet. So well, no, quite at the optimal dry running temperatures in the track and the tyres, so the hard tyres are going to take significantly longer to heat up. And when you don't have tyre temperature, you struggle for grip, you have no traction, and there's no sense of confidence in the car, so that's why I'm concerned about the hard runners. Jamham's went onto the soft, so he's probably going to go for a bust of speed here, try and make up as much as he can. And he'll have significant tyre temperature with his sauce because they're going to be the softest tyre right, and the easiest the pits, to heat up. Jones in the pits and Daddy's in the pits. Let's see what tyres they've got on. Red World's going to take the lead back because of his in ground break. So, Murphy's going to set a hard. Danny hasn't actually gone to the pits yet. Danny's going on to a set of softs. Okay. <coughs> Fast for Danny. Joel's on a set of medium, so very different strategies at the moment here in Brazil. Danny is going to be very quick on those soft compound tyres, would say. Definitely, I feel like Ham Jam and DJ Danny are probably like if I'm if I'm if I'm having any preference oh, for the strategies. Oh, Danny's already getting past Joel now. One driver done that in six. Next up is uh, Jam Ham. He's hard now, he looks on a set of softs. Oh, what, what was he going to say, sorry? I completely cut you off. No, I, f I was just, just going to say, I was just going to follow you up and say that I think the soft tyres is definitely a tyre you want to be on because the track is still going to be significantly cool in temperature and the softs can get up to their working temperature much quicker. You can see it already here. Xylon struggling for traction. Jamham up the inside at turn 11. Easy as you like. DJ Daniel with the exact same, he'll get the run Look off the, the exit. Grip. It's the traction, it's the level of traction. We will not be too surprised, Maldi. Like, might be a bit much to kind of sit and say, but Jamha will be right on the back of Murphy in a couple of laps. Like, and it just depends how quick that they clear Murphy and VZ, and we'll see how much they can eat into the into the lead, but soft runners is definitely where really, the, the money I lies. I don't think, personally, I think we're a little bit too quick, even on the hards, but oh. Danny's going to come out. Uh, Jam out now. Danny's on it at the moment. He's trying to go around the inside of Jam out P4 now. He is on it, like a, I was about to say, like a car bonnet around the outside of the hard. Danny is looking quick. Do you understand? He is on fire. Aki Nabazil. <coughs> DJ Danny really looking to be a standout performer so far in the early stages and he is Keen Jamham almost Keen Jamham the hurry up both of them on the same strategy and both of them closing significantly on the McLaren in front so um, I think DJ Danny and Jamham will be your two to watch for in this stage, Hamjam's the other soft runner, but he's in his, he's in a, a just in a patch. Oh, and DJ Danny's going to go up the inside, sorry, just to cut myself off. Um, but DJ Danny up the inside, the jam ham, and he turned one in, up into P4. P4 and for Danny, what a put, this is massive. understand, he's actually insane. Oh, this is getting very close to the curve there, and now Murder's going to come back at him. This is incredible racing for these and Danny and Jam have the fly on those softs. Owen oh, VZ's 
um, lost the place to Murphy for P2. We've completely missed that as well. So if the if a second and further going to start battling, that's going to allow DJ Danny and Jamhammer. And you can see them there on the back of the uh, ever the rear ring of the Haas. You can see DJ Danny and Jamham closing in, and Jill in the mediums as so, well. Richie, sorry, I feel what like is going on? because I know this is Brazil. Like I don't really expect their doubters to be so much bigger. Why? Why, why is it uh, Danny and Jamham are getting such an advantage at the moment? Central. It's because the soft tyres, the softer the tyre means the easier to, to warm up. So, see, because the track is still in these adverse cool conditions, it's no quite peak dry tyre time, um, in my opinion. Um, like, because it has been raining, track has been wet, track's still relatively cold. So, if you're going to be on softer tyres, you can heat them up easier and you're going to get your performance quicker. So, that's why we're seeing such a big gap in performance between the soft runners so that's DJ Danny Jamham and Ham Jam and even Jill's Jill in the mediums oh, yeah. He's so Jill's Jill's is Jill's is he's quick to heat up but his are more durable so he's on that strategy where if he needs to jump onto the soft tires at the end he can but he can also stretch it to the end if he really wants to I feel like the medium runners in the long run Apparently, are sorry, in the best position we didn't see that. Um, VZ lost the place last lap somewhere, but DJ Danny, just looking at it, Maldi, the traction he's getting off Jun Shao and up the hill is so just boxes. Well, boxes. That's that's the corner man. The only I do like that the only though. issue is the the only issue the soft tire runners are kind of starting to face now at the front is. Murphy and VZ are still kind of like VZ still got the DRS and the McLaren in the front, so it's going to be really hard to make a move in these big straights. They're going to have to go for it in a in one of the, the slow traction zones in the sector too. So um, DJ Danny really will need to get uh, will need to try and get close somewhere um, as we ride on board with Jamham, who is right underneath the rear wing of the Alfa Romeo as well. So I feel like the softs will really be at their best in sector two, but there's no any no real moves on at the minute. DJ Danny no really close enough as he would like to be uh, to the house in front. But if you can get a good exit off here, you can see VZ slowly just starting to drop back. Jamham being patient on the on the exit, and he's got so much more ERS to play with, DJ Danny was on at least like 40% last time I checked, but Danny has got the DRS flap open, and VZ's got the DRS flap open, and they're all closing in on Murphy, and DJ oh Danny's going for a late move, oh and he's tapped! Danny, that's going to have been the wrong break, he has completely messed that up completely. He has um, completely messed his chances there. What was that? <laughs> I really would need to see that one back, Maldi, but um, just looking at it, it's really... He, he was going up the inside of VZ, and I think he only originally planned for VZ, but I think the fact that the the slowing speeds of the McLaren and the fact that Murphy was just kind of also taking the main racing line through uh, turn one, Danny's just completely got caught out by the late braking, and just had nowhere else to go. I think that's pretty much crazy. pretty much sums that up. Um, Absolutely but crazy. that is completely completely killed any real um any real chance that he had. Um so uh, overtake it's sorry no, to go to side by side. It's no oh up the inside P three for the Ferrari. And see no that's well, it, 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 it might it may have been a mistake on Danny's end, but he's still P7. I was like, a little bit no, confused. Still see him. Why are you going up the inside there? I was a little bit baffled. He's clearly now from Zyklon. And oh, and he up and he P7 and he goes. And that's the kind of thing I just remembered as well, Maldi. I don't know. I don't know what the strategy is but see because the race started on wet tyres like on intermediates you don't need to run two dry compound tyres you can go soft soft if you're Jam Ham or DJ Danny or Ham Jam you can go 
softs all the way to the end. So I feel like they might do a double soft stint rather than do a medium if they've got a fresh set of softs there. So um, I feel like they'll just be looking for the quickest route to the flag um, and I feel like the soft soft might be it. Um, Jamham is in some clear air but he isn't, he isn't really putting away for Joe. Um, so I don't know if the softs have already kind of um, went past their peak, so to speak. But um, but I feel like uh, DJ Danny having that run with Murphy has allowed Jamham through up into P2. So um, I feel like Jamham massively benefited from that as I'm on board with Zyklon doing the back straight into turn 4. And that's Kevin up the inside, that's a P8, so Zyklon losing the place. Now he's on the back um, of Danny. And Danny's going to have maybe slightly warmer tyres than he would want um, after he's spent. It'll be a matter of tyre management to try and cool the tyres down and maybe divert and go on the, the wider lines, like the traditional go kart lines, and um, try and cool the tyres down. Um, and be less aggressive and assertive on the on the, the car demands, but we know, sorry, um, that Bruno Will is absolutely insane. But so what is going on? He's five seconds ahead. What, what's happening? I'm starting to think it might just be Jamham's soft tyres have kind of went past it. Um, the pit windy for softs is there for at least another few laps, so I, won't need, I don't think we'll see see a man until at least like lap, like lap 24, 25, and then it'll be a 10 lap dash to the end. But uh, Bruno will just knows that he needs to manage the gap. It's 12.3. He's pretty much unchallenged, so all he really needs to do now, is, is just, 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 just out, it's, like, I'm, I'm, I'm actually exactly. Backward. Like, all he honestly needs today, Maldi, is just, is, is genuinely just keep it on the track and hope there's no safety car. Another faster start, this is insane. And it's a 1 minute 9.2. Is Jill, this is right on the back of Jam Ham. Yeah, goes the long way run. And Jam Ham, I think the soft tyres of maybe gave up the ghost. DC is now struggling on them hards. I'm lucky for him. He's obviously the second fastest Brazilian here. And now he's going to get overtaken by Venom. That's not good for your, your home race, but you can try and get back, follow Venom, and then see if he can gain it uh, any more uh, time on the others around him. But Venom's in a good race at the moment. But he did have some sort of contact with Mercury earlier, so we do need to see what happened there. Definitely, it's um, a matter of, I think the hard tyres might be coming into coming into play now as well. So, like that was the kind of thing as well, like, even though the soft tyres of Jam Ham, Danny and Ham were all looking, like, significantly quicker on the start, I think the patience of the hard runners is kind of starting to pay off and come into fruition. No, because they are going to be on challenge to the end. So, like, Bruno Will's already got a 13 point uh, second gap, so he doesn't need to worry about anything else unless it is a safety car. Like, he needs drivers to lap a second a lap average between now and the end if they're going to catch him. But he can just drive, he can, he can literally coast Maui, go for a final fast lap at the end if the gap is still is significant and and get it in the end. But uh, I think he's already got really the fastest gap to the end. It's one of nine caps. Raising right. Bruno Will is on next level. And they it's, say they say Brazilians don't mess about the job. They really don't. Four places Murphy then he's getting caught by Omar Venom here. And it's Jamham up in front, and that's the thing as well, Maldi. It's just we DRS trains. It's really hard to make 
overtakes yeah. and as soon as I say that Jamham dives into the pits so Murphy doesn't even need to make the move on track but that'll be Jamham going on to another set of softs most likely gone for a slightly longer stint of softs on at the end we'll see what tiles he actually does go on to as another set of softs so he has got some fresh softs there so that'll be um, we'll be seeing Jamham wherever he's going to come out, he might come out just behind his brother, just in front of the two, uh, just in front of Janino, sorry, so, and a nice wee slot of clean air, and he could actually still get P6, like, genuinely P6 is still on the cards for him, but he needs to make quick work at the new before, before that opportunity is pretty much gone. Who's that, sorry, Danny? That's Jamham. On! Cut! Murphy's away! I don't know what happened there, Maldi. I don't even know how to explain it. But Murphy, big snappy oversteer coming down into the final corner and he's run really oh. wide. And I'm surprised he's actually escaped without any damage. That's allowed Venom through, but is he going to try and retake the place as early as lose as quick as he lost it? No. But Venom. Pretty much just was Venom's a bystander was like, oh. It's not medium, it's just the right, right way to go, it looks like here. Medium runners are flying. Definitely. Definitely. It's, um, mediums kind of leaves the door open for softs if you need them. But, um, also gets you to the end, um, as well. So, mediums kind of is that middle ground and I feel like that might have been the optimum strategy coming off of the, the, the intermediates. Yellow flags, that is from Mercury in the pit lane. He's done an awful race tonight. Absolutely awful race. Oh, my God. It's, it's just, just been... It's been nowhere and it's so unfortunate for him, but... I'm sure we're back in Abu Dhabi to do the final race of the season and MC is on a high after an hour. Definitely, it's like you, you like you, you, like Abu Dhabi. Everything's pretty much decided at this point. Um, it's just a matter of testing the drivers and just trying to regain some confidence. Get into season 18, so that'll definitely be his priority. Um, I think everybody will be looking forward to just seeing how they plan for next season. We've got one race left after this before the the the, the winter break before the new season so um, definitely just use this time just to kind of set yourself up and get yourself back in the right frame of mind definitely so we know we'll leave the race we're in today. again do you understand we know what it is 14.4 um, <laughs> seconds it's been a very dominant season for him I don't really think it's going to be I mean, he's setting up a fastest lap as well. It's, it's drives like this that just show you that he meant business all season. Like, he has probably put in a relentless amount of practice for his home race. He wanted to impress. He is significantly quicker than the rest of the field on harder tyres. His pole time was absolutely ridiculous, almost breaching the one minute fives. And uh, absolute faultless. We've barely been on board with him because he's just kind of drove his own race. This is probably just time trial to him. But um, he'll be. He can hold his heat high um, and hopefully keep it um, on the straight and narrow to the end. Even if there is a safety car, he can easily just jump into the pits and put some softs on and cover off any any strategy advantages that other drivers may have up and down the field. So he really is in he is really in strong stead, Maldi. Like there's no other there's no ifs but some maybe it has definitely been Bruno Will's season as well as his race. Definitely. 14.7 seconds, the gap nearly 15 seconds. That is absolutely insane. This reminds me of um, Al Pavao uh, back in Japan uh, one season. I think it was season 16, if not 17. 
and he just dominated the whole race. I think he won by at least 20 seconds, and he just dominated the whole race. From start to finish. This is one of them rides, um, and he's really showing that he is one to look out for to become a, a world champion next season. Definitely, it will be very much, very much looking forward to see if he does um, retain the title. Um, they say in May Sports, it's harder to retain the title than win it the first time. So we'll see how true that statement tends to be. Um, and I think even though the season has been um, as dominant as it was, like he did still have some slips in between and other drivers were there to pick up the pieces like his teammate Ham Jam, like Jam Ham as well in the Haas had picked up pieces. Connor, who isn't he here today, he's always gave Bruno Willer Winfrey's money. Davies in really early on in the season when he was here, like looked to give Bruno Willer a challenge and looked like it was going to be Mercedes versus Williams up uh, to the end, but Bruno Will just kind of hit that ninth gear and and now we're here. So I think even with the domination that he has had um, across the season, this has also gave his his rivals ammunition to try and better themselves and challenge for that for the elusive title. So I don't think he'll definitely have it easy, and I think that's why they say it is harder to retain it than to win it. Um, so, very much looking forward to seeing uh, how he deals with that pressure. Yes, yeah, so we're going to lap 29 now. Not many battles we can see, it's just the drivers driving around trying to get through, but there is that um, start in Cuffy's point in between Venom and Murphy, so I have to keep an eye on that. That's that's the that's the the I've been on board with Murphy for like honestly what feels like the last three or four laps and again it's a very one-dimensional perspective but everybody else is just kind of running their own race it's a DRS zones just in the traffic that's the closest battle on track that we're going to get so that's kind of why we're here so Murphy and McClellan are getting like a very healthy amount of screen time at the minute um so I don't, the, I don't the really know where else they put the camera. What, what, what chocolate company is it? Husky chocolate, is that there? Husky chocolate, we've got husky chocolate in the car, we've got Gulf Oil on the side, we've got... Who else? Everything. Sponsor McLaren, we've got Splunk. Again, that's a sponsor on the side. We've got Dell Dark Technologies Trace. on the rear wing. Dell Technology, Dark yeah. Trace. Yeah, say Gold so, at the back there, look. Say um, and we've got Logitech Tech on the wheel, so we've got a fair few. And if you're looking at Williams in front, you've got Safina on the <laughs> rear wing. So we're doing the sponsors for both teams quite well so far. Um, yeah. But like that's kind of at time, Aldi. Um, nothing really to be watching. Zyklon's in the pits with some soft, so. And, uh, had a front wing change. Oh, I feel for Danny Nick, because he had a great opportunity to potentially get a podium. He would have been really quick on them starts. It just hasn't been this day, you know, that spin. Reminds me a bit of how much did Hulk come though, 2012. Definitely, like it was, it purely was just that. Um, yeah, when you kind of look at, um, don't take that, uh, you can look at the Hulkenberg incident of 2012 and you can look at DJ Danny's incident and you can almost take it as a, a frame by frame almost <laughs> like they're very they're very reminiscent of the other um so but we've got murphy going run the outside of venom and he turned one sorry just to kind of cut his off there but venom gave him the wee squeeze on the outside and he forced murphy to kind of think twice nice. about the move but Joe. Looks like the medium are going off for a turn. Looks like the medium are going off. Definitely, and the hard tyres might be the tyre of choice between the two. Venom just looked a bit slow off the exit of the final turn. Oh, I, I don't know how Bruno was so quick, the gap's 17 seconds. What was going on? 
hot, the, the hot tiles will probably kind of step in in their own performance framework now, so I think they'll be in their best their best position, especially considering the medium tiles. Um, only, only the best. Like it's like the medium tiles are softer than the hard tiles, so they're going to wear um, earlier as yeah. well. So um, I feel the mediums have kind of just. They're at that stage where they need to be nursed, they need to be caressed, they need to be carefully driven um, to try and make it to the end. Um, I don't think Jill or Venom will really be kind of wanting to go foot to the floor and go for a fastest lap or try and shave a 17 second deficit uh, in, in the short space of time they've got left, but um, they're just going to say, oh we want P2 and 3, we'll just try and get P2 and 3. Um, and they, they have penalties, so we don't really know um, how it's going to finish. But um, they are just looking to get to the end, Maldi. They don't have anything to gain up in front. Uh, so the best they can really do is just nurse the tiles and see themselves to the check and flag. Hopefully, and P2 and 3, that's what they'll be trying to fight for. But Murphy will probably want to try and rewrite that particular script. Yeah, here we go then. Overtaking the slipstream into the DRS. This is going to be the move to P3. He is up the inside this time. Later on the brakes, we pinch on the outside for the Williams. Has to hold it around the outside. Up the inside of two, and he still keeps the place. Brilliant race in there between the two. And Venom is making it that bit harder. For yellow, yellow flag. P14 now. It's an absolute horrible day for Alfa Romeo. It is a very good but day for McLaren and their sponsors, let me say that now. But uh, definitely, like, um, DJ, eh, DJ Dunny, sorry. Um, Murphy. Like, he honestly looked like he could have had to move up the inside the turn one. And maybe run Venom. Um, yeah, well, I was away. I was like, yes, come on, like, you've got the overtake done, what's going on? And then now, they haven't got it done again. Venom is really good defensive here. He's taken very unconventional lines up through the start finish straight, so I think he is just trying to kind of break the slipstream as much as he possibly can, but um, I think Murphy might kind of look at the because um, he'll have that telemetry on his on his uh, his his HUD, but um, Venom's got a penalty, so I don't think he'll be really taking too many risks in trying to get Bill's past. Got a penalty I don't as think well. he'll be. In, we don't know. We don't know how many steps. I definitely want to keep the, the viewers in uh, an element of suspense, but. I think Murphy might just know that it's no worth taking the risk of maybe like getting your front wing run over. So I think you'll just be playing the, the game of patience. Um, so, but he is looking to punch it off the final turn. Venom looking relatively sluggish and slow. And Murphy might have done a lot earlier. Going on. I don't know why there's the other oh, but. But Murphy is already through Maldi as he looks up, going into turn one. Trying to come back at him, he went after the RS, I believe, that next drive. He will do, he will do. He's went through the detection zone. Venom will have the DRS. Murphy is going to leave the inside open. Venom's going to try and get up the inside. There's still wheel to wheel. Murphy runs away. And Murphy is through. I don't think it's quite done yet. Venom will be looking to try and get back through, but I think, and you can see there in the brakes, they are like the the tyres on the hooked um, up onto the tarmac. So I think Murphy will be um, cruising away now at this point. But Bruno will does start the final voyage. A the interlag circuit here in Sao Paulo. So Bruno will 
absolutely, very much absolute insane. Do you understand? Absolutely insane. Fourth of Runner World Gap, 16 seconds. Let's go and get down a little bit. But Runner World has just been cruising. He has been loving life in Brazil in home race. We, we, we expected this. Yeah, we, we expected it. You know, well, to be, you know, winning the Brazilian Grand Prix. We expected this. We ex but we didn't really expect him to lead by this, this much. Maybe he's led every lap we see. What a drop it's been for Bruno World. And our first prediction, which was correct, was this season Bruno World was going to win. So, there you go. It's, it's no every day that we share the same opinion but we're on board with Bruno Wells he does take the checkered flag here on Bruno Sao Paulo wins the Brazilian Grand Prix he's got an overtake as well down that straight burning it all and that is an incredible performance but it looks like Rixie Joel is going to drop positions he's 2.4 seconds ahead of Murphy Murphy's going to be P2 there third is Joel fourth on his debut is Omar uh, Venom, but where is he going to drop to? BC, BC goes back up to fifth. Kevin in the end is P4. Jamham is P6. That is P8. Uh, -E Bird is P9. No penalties for him. Tev Ali Italia, 11th. Disappointing race for Ham Chad 2002. Very disappointing for the Ham, for the Ham Brothers. And Janinho is P12. Sycom will be 13th. And AMS Dan One will be P14. That is your Brazilian Grand Prix live from the Auto the Autodomo the Jose Colas Pache. And your driver of the day from the game is Alpha Kevin, but I think we can agree with that our driver of the day is definitely the Arena World. Um, insane performance. And he is, yeah, he, he was on fire. The Hulks. It's, I think Bruno Will did, it's like, there could be some good driver of the day nominations. Kevin there, 13th to 4th. I think that was, your, you were saying that was the one in the game. Uh, weren't we? I think that's a strong driver in itself. Um, Bruno Will, first to first, very commanding, significantly quicker than everybody else, untroubled at the front. Um, I, I'd probably, I'd probably have to get to Bruno Will, but I would give like a special mention to Kevin for a really strong drive through the field to get P4 at the end of the day, yes. driving a clean race, no penalties, and. Makes it a Ferrari 3 4. Very strong for uh, the Brazilians here today. First, fourth, fifth. 12th for Janinho, not that strong, but still, he has an opportunity tomorrow in tier two to have another go at his home race. Uh, we've got two of the podium finishers. Obviously, Vera Bruno will dominant display, but unfortunately, he can't speak English, and viewers, you won't understand any uh, Portuguese that we would um, exchange. So, unfortunately, we can't interview Bruno will. At his home race, but we can interview Murphy and Joel. Joel, I'm going to come to you. Um, it seems like you're having a bit of a bit of a good time at the minute uh, in, in the league. Obviously, you had a po you had P3 in Mexico, and you've had P3 here in Brazil. What, what's going on? Tell me. I mean, I guess I needed that break that I took for a while, so now I'm uh, I'm better than ever, I guess, because before Definitely. I could never even get close to a podium, and now I'm wow, going back to back. Uh, Joel. Uh, yeah. <laughs> with the first lap, how was your uh, first lap? Because it seemed quite clean, but was it clean from your uh, point of view? It was clean, but it was wet, and it's just horrific. I was happy that uh, I think the guy in P2 was like backing everybody down, so I could just Eastern. stay with them. Okay. A bit, um, yep, yeah. Obviously, you've had a podium in Mexico and Brazil. Is it going to be a triple? You're going to make it a triple one in in um, Yas Marina. I'm going for the win, mate. All out. Okay. Uh, Murphy, seven. Um, 
obviously P2, another strong performance for you here in Brazil, or Interlagos rather. Um, obviously, uh, had a good battle with uh, VC. Uh, take us through that. What, yeah, what, what was going on? Was um, Did you feel that he held you up at times in the start of the race or, or what? Yeah, so initially he was quicker than me last two laps or so, but then the next five or six laps after that, um, yeah, I felt I was quicker, but in the rain it's just hard to get on the power behind someone, so just like follow him into the to the pit um, for the hards or mediums, whatever it was going to be. And then, yeah. Yeah. No um, penalties, so just get get towards the end. No penalties, yes. Uh, another great race in Brazil. What are your expectations ahead of next week in Abu Dhabi? The fun race of the season. Are you going to go all out as well, or, or no, Abu Dhabi not Abu really Dhabi. track? Are there? I'm absolutely awful at Abu Dhabi, so I won't be well, anywhere near P2. <laughs> well, we will, we will hope that you uh, have a decent I'm just happy anyway. to get P2 here, by the way, because I hit the wall. I don't know if you caught it on stream, but I think... <laughs> You hit the wall? Yep, I absolutely slammed the wall and got no damage. Oh, very lucky. Well, thank you, Murphy, and well done on your P2. <laughs> well done, Joel, on your P3. Have a great performance. Yeah, GG, Tim. Um, thank you, Rick, for joining me in box here in Interlagos. Um, and that concludes, uh, guys, your Brazilian Grand Prix uh, live from um, the Brazilian Grand Prix. Uh, the Auto do Maman. Do Jose, Col uh, Jose Colas Pache. Uh, do join the Tier 2 tomorrow, I believe, uh, Mercury and Danny for the Tier 2 Brazilian Grand Prix tomorrow. And if not, do join us for the season finale of Season 17 uh, for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. It should be an absolute cracker. We'll see you next week in Abu Dhabi.